Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is David Poole, a graduate student at Iowa State University, and today I will be talking about bringing Julia to the realm of electronic structure theory through the usage of uh, the JulieChem.jl package. But first, what is electronic structure theory? Well, electronic structure theory is essentially the field of quantum chemistry, where basically we try and find and we basically solve the Schrodinger equation, at least in a prime and approximate solution for it, for a given set of molecules, a given set of atoms, a given system, or whatever we're trying to study. The Schrodinger equation is quite the famous equation, basically taking the form of H psi equals E psi, where if you apply the Hamiltonian operator to your psi, which is the wave function, then you get the energy of the wave function back as an eigenvalue. Now, a lot of research in uh, electronic structure theory focuses on the development of different computational methods. And the different existence of these different computational methods are intended to improve both the accuracy of the uh, approximate solutions that are acquired from the Schrodinger equation, as well as the computational feasibility of different calculations that can be performed, like we could perform calculations on larger and larger systems. Of all the methods in electronic structure theory, one of the fundamental ones is the restricted Hartree-Fock method. The idea behind the restricted Hartree-Fock method is that you apply a number of approximations to the Schrodinger equation, and by doing that, you can reduce the Schrodinger equation down to a matrix-based pseudo-eigenvalue equation with the form F times C is equal to S times C times epsilon. Each of these have different meanings and context, so I'll go through that. F is the Fock matrix, as it's called, and it basically describes all, it's basically a mathematical description of all the one and two electron uh, interactions within the system. The one electron interactions are modeled by H, the uh, one electron Hamiltonian matrix, whereas the two electron, inter the two electron interactions are judged by the uh, summation on the right side, where the interactions are made up by D, the density matrix, as well as these four index terms as well, where the uh, four index terms are can refer to as the two electron integrals or the Coulomb and exchange integrals, and those make up the bottleneck of the entire Hartree-Fock calculation. S refers to the overlap matrix. C refers to the molecular orbital coefficients acquired from the basis set selected. And epsilon is the matrix of orbital energies. So because, um, the, because the Fock matrix depends on the density matrix, which depends on C, which depends on the Fock matrix itself, we have to use an iterative process to actually calculate the Fock matrix overall. And the way that works is as follows. We start by building the Hamiltonian and the uh, overlap matrix. We then build our initial guess F. We then diagonalize F to get our MO coefficients. We use that to build our initial density matrix. Then we check convert for convergence. And convergence is typically defined as the root mean square of your density between two iterations being different or being less than a given threshold. So basically, you basically check for convergence. If you're not converged, you build your new Fock matrix, diagonalize that to get your MO coefficients again, and use that to create your new density matrix, and repeat this cycle until you reach convergence, at which point you're done with your SCF calculation. Now, uh, Julia Chem is a package that's supposed to optimize, uh, offers an optimized implementation of the restricted Hartree Fock method written almost entirely in Julia. So the work on Julia Chem started about a year and a half or so ago, and its overall goal is to demonstrate the usefulness of Julia to the electronic structure theory community, considering Julia isn't quite popular in the community. And the idea is that this would be useful because uh, Julia has the high-level semantics and low-level performance to basically get the performance of low-level languages without sacrifice, with basically to get the performance of low-level languages while easily being writable. And this would be good because most quantum chemistry codes are written in either C, C++, or Fortran. A lot, some others are also combined with Python, but then that runs into the two language problem. So ultimately, we want to come to a solution to that. So how well does Julia Chem actually perform? So if we take a comparison to Julia Chem against Games, one of the most popular quantum chemistry software packages, and do a series of calculations on a certain test set of molecules referred to as the S22 test set, and take a ratio of their speed ups, we get the graph that's, we get the plot that's shown here. We can see that uh, we have recent ERIC, which are basically two different electron integral calculations that I use for games. And we see that if we use the Reese algorithm, the speed up for Julia Chem is actually quite significant in some cases, ranging out within the uh, 20, even 40% speed up in some cases. Although there's one slowdown at the very end, most of the, most of the time, 
Joy Chem shows speed ups compared to the race version with games. Compared to the Eric algorithm for electron repulsion integrals, Julia Chem keeps up with games for a good portion of the calculations, especially for the smaller ones where it tends to be faster. However, for the larger ones, it's slightly slower. Julia Chem is slightly slower in the order of about 10-15%. But overall, Julia Chem tends to keep up with games overall pretty well. So the other question becomes, this is a parallel code. So how does parallel scalability look? And we did that by uh, taking a 50 water cluster and basically running it on a 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 nodes, or not nodes, but MPI ranks. And we took a look at how the, sp how the speed up was compared to serial. We can see that at 32 worker ranks, the speed up is uh, 30.1 times, which basically means that, the, which basically we can see the speed up is almost linear basically going up to uh, 32 MPI ranks. However, it falters a little bit starting at 64 MPI ranks, where we see a speed up of 47.3, which gives us an efficiency of approximately 70-ish percent. So it's not actually very bad, but there is a slight faltering. But overall, we can see that for our 50 water cluster, Joy Chem displays pretty effective, pretty effective parallel scalability to go along with its speed ups. And we can see that based on comparisons to the popular games electronic structure theory software package for the uh, restricted hartree fock method. So basically the idea that by combining its uh, pretty, eff pretty efficient performance compared to games, as well as reasonably high scalability up to 64 CPU cores, uh, Julia Kim provides a proof of concept for the applicability of Julia to electronic structure theory research, where basically we can see that Julia can in fact be applied to computations required in quantum chemistry. Now, uh, speaking about Julia, so overall, speaking about Julia itself, programming in Julia has been a fantastic experience overall, and I would say it's been transformative to my experience as a graduate student, considering that Julia Chem is one of my main projects now. However, I wouldn't say that the language for Julia is entirely perfect. There are a few things that I would kind of wish for if I were to make a wish list. The first one is uh, maybe surprisingly improved profiling tools. Not that Julia doesn't have profiling tools to begin with. There are certainly quite a few of them. But I know there were times when I was profiling the Julia Chem code, and I was kind of looking for specific things to be done, like what portion percent of a function takes up a run, basically what proportion of runtime is spent within certain functions. And I wasn't quite able to get that. Finally, there's a lot of new GPU programming models being used for exascales such as Sickle, DPC++, and HIP, and uh, it'd be great to see some support for those along with CUDA and OpenCL. Now, I'd like to make some acknowledgments. I'd like to thank everyone in Dr. Mark Gordon's group at Iowa State University, as well as Dr. Mark Gordon himself for allowing me to go on this project. And I'd like to thank the developers of Julia and the Julia community for making this endeavor possible. All right, does anyone have any questions?